programming language is very easy and very simple to learn, right? So before I go with the programming languages, again I'll be dealing with what is programming, what is programming language, and with all because we have some new students up there. Okay, so I'll be dealing with all those things, right? So yes, we have done something in the morning. Again, I'm asking, what is programming, guys? What is programming language? Yeah. So those who attended the morning session can answer. What is programming language now? Just waiting for the answers. Language uh, which is uh, understandable by uh, computer. Mm -hmm. Okay, language which computer and, uh, understand. Okay. Uh, user can uh, uh, enter a such a kind of code to understand by the computer. Hmm. All right. Exactly. So there, as I said, we need to learn some a language, something a language which will make us compatible to work with computer. Or if we want to communicate, let's consider a scenario. Let's say I am you are now communicating. We are communicating through a language, let it be English. Okay, let it be any other language. So maybe you all were from some different backgrounds and some different having, might you might have some different languages of your own. But still, we are conver uh, conversating between the English language, right? So, if we want to communicate the same as with our machines, so we need to have some language, communication language. So, that communication language is called as your programming language. That's all. Not going with the bookish definition because in the bookish definition, if you go there, programming language is called as your uh, the language in which you give some set of codes and you give everything to the computer to understand your instructions. Ranjan Chatterjee is saying a language is a type of service which is a which is understood by the computer. How it work is we give it uh, instructions in a in that particular language that the computer gives the output. All right, that's good. Okay, that's correct. So yeah, so that was a programming language, right? So now we come to the next topic of the programming language, excluding the language, we come up the term with call as your programming, right? So what is programming? Uh, oh, uh, by the way, my name is Shivang. Oh yeah, sorry, uh, your, your name is Shivang. Okay, fine. Okay. So what is then programming? If we exclude this programming language, if we exclude the language from the programming language term, we come with a programming section only. So what exactly is programming? If you go with this, so again in the definition or with the uh, static definition, if you go, you can say it as the uh, set of instructions or the codes, a set of codes or set of uh, rules and regulations, set of protocols you give to your program. Right? You give to your machine or you give to your program to give you some specific outputs. That is called as your programming or that is called as your program. Right? That's all. So we'll deal with, so there are a lot of programming languages as we have some countries over there, a lot of countries are having some, a lot of um, languages out there. So similarly, the lot of machines have a lot of languages. Okay? This languages group are known as for programming language. And these programming lang languages are of various types and you can we are studying the python language today right so yeah so python is a programming language which is very easy and very simple to learn so python cuts the development time in half and it's why we are using because it's a very simple and very uh, less usage of time is there to read the syntax and for the easy compilation fe feature so i'll be going with all those things don't worry so yes so if we define Python is kind of a very high level object orientation. So we'll be covering what is Python, why it's Python popular features and all these things. So yes, so it is a high level object oriented interpreted programming language. Um, now what are all these things? What is high level? What is object oriented interpreted programming? So we'll do, go with all these things. Suppose, let's say, Let's say I have written that it is a high level language. Now what is high level? High level stands that it can be used by the professionals. That is particularly that it can be used by the professional ones. Right. So what is object oriented or what is interpreted programming will go by that. 
all these things we'll go with this interpreted programming in this term particularly we'll go with this term all right so now we'll see what is the basic difference or what is the basic introduction to an interpreter and a compiler okay so see guys to understand the difference between an uh, interpreter or a compiler what we'll do is we'll take an example of a very small example i can say okay so with a very small example i can say you like uh, if you want to write if you want to write a code if you want to write a code uh, let suppose you are writing a table over there you are writing a table of four and in a compiler based and you are writing a table of four in an interpreter based one right this is a machine which runs on interpreted programming and this is based on compiler programming let me first give you the example then i will discuss what are those so it runs what is not going there all right so this four compiler or this table of four in the compiler one would be written as something four into one and so on it will continue right so what will happen i'll write till four into ten that's all i'll write similarly four into ten till here now if i see the outputs so if i see the outputs if i've written correctly every output would be correct now if what if i write any particular line wrong let's say i have written four into 5 equals to 30 let's say right and i have done the same error here too and in the here too what will happen you write all the codes here in the compiler one and you execute this while executing you will be getting your output all right that output will give you a syntax or sorry that output will give you an answer right but you while checking you will see that this particularly step is wrong okay so that is an error out there now so that is kind of an error right but you don't know your error only the checker who is checking knows the error that you have done a mistake over there right in case of an interpreter in case of an interpreter let's take here an example of uh, like your mom or your teacher is sitting beside you and make you write the tables so immediately when you write a wrong table he or she will let you know that you are writing a wrong table and you will have to correct it all right so this is a very simple example of how compiler and an interpreter is working on so compiler basically will convert your human written code inside the machine learning code or machine uh, understandable code once at a time okay so you write 150 pages of code it will be compiled once into the machine language if you write 150 lines of code in the interpreter this is in the compiler if you write this in the interpreter it will convert every particular line one by one so first line you write it will be converted into machine language second write you line it will be converted into machine language meanwhile if any line is getting any kind of error it will just say that there is an error first correct the error and then proceed to the third line okay and here you will not be getting any such kind of that this particular line is having some errors or not it will, it will just raise that you were having a syntax error or type error or file explorer error any kind of errors okay so compiler always learn and always try to understand that called compiler transforms the code written in a very high level programming language and then it comes files is into the machine code for once at once okay and whereas an interpreter will convert each line one by one into the machine language or machine code okay this is the basic difference between them for a compiler and a interpreter right so python is in a very simple words is a high level dynamic programming language which is interpreted so this work on the basis of interpreted okay so here even in a very particular step if you do any mistake it will just raise an error and will say that there is an error in that particular line so go and fix it out okay that's all so this python was built by sir van rossum in 1809 sorry 89 over there okay 
and this particular language is in the top graph of the 2020 all right so how it is how we see all these so for me if i consider myself so for me python is very favorite and the most preferred language to work on because it's very simple right and it is having a powerful libraries and frameworks to work on i'll go with that ppt so we'll focus on uh, today's topic right so now we'll see why python has became so popular right so python is popular because its language is very preferred by a beginners and the professionals right so it depends on what type of a user you are it depend on what type of user you are whether you are a professional or you are a beginner so you have to choose your ide accordingly okay so ide section will do in the last one so you whether you are a professional whether you are a beginner it depends on what you are okay yes moving ahead so this is your one of the thing that it is very easy to learn and it depends on your uh, beginners on a pro alike as i said so it's very easy to learn moving ahead so it, it is an open source software that you can see massive support you are getting it's a platform independent which makes it free for everyone it is also called as guys it is also called as floss right free liver open source software sometimes it comes in the examination like what is a floss okay so there you have to find it is a free liver open source software okay every particular application which is open to everyone to work so that is called particularly as a free liver open source software right my writing would not be much clear or still i'm speaking out there you can manage your that okay moving ahead so the third reason we come that you can develop desktop websites or any particular websites mobile application you can develop desktop not desktop it is desktop softwares so you can develop desktop softwares websites mobile applications and a lot of thing to help out with the python so we can code out there we can it is a platform independent it is having a pre defined uh, libraries it is easy to learn now we'll see that it has a very big community where you are being helped by the users or be the community users for getting some libraries day by day all right so i'm moving ahead now what are the features of the python so let me come down one by one and we'll discuss now so coming simplicity so simplicity is where you think less of a syntax of a code or a language and you think more of a code okay so here what you do is syntax is something the way of writing a particular code right so if you write the code in a wrong way it will give you a syntax error that's probably very clear to you right so your simplicity will come there so simplicity will think less of a syntax of a language and will more focus on the code okay so it's very simple it focus more on the code not on the syntax of the languages for there so syntax you need to write the correct okay so what is open source now so open source is a powerful language open source you can say that is python is a powerful language and it's free to everyone to use and alter as a needed all right so moving next portability so python code can be shared and it would work the same way it was intended to okay so it is seamless and hassle free there to work on so now we see the embedded and extensible so what are these so python can have snippets of other language inside it to perform certain functions what i am saying is exactly let it be any particular language code let it be html c let it be c c c++ c json file any particular language now what you do is there you just embed the code in some particular topic inside the python there you have options to bring the code from different language and to edit on and then you convert it again in that same particular language and then work on for that okay so that is your embedded and extensible option right then we have an option called as being interpreted so what is being interpreted now so the worries of large memory any programming language or any programmer always have a worry of a memory location or you can say as a memory management because we try to make programs 
as short as we can so that we can reduce the size of the memory okay so that what python helps if you load a million of data in the python you will see it is only of some kbs over there only some kb let it be 800 kb one uh, or 700 kb 25 kb that much only okay so that is called as your interpreter so the worries of the large memory task uh, and the uh, other heavy cpu task are very uh, taken care of by the python there okay and you were left alone itself for working only on the coding section not on much on the memory management and everything okay that is your interpreter so huge amount of libraries are there in the python as i said in to cover the field of artificial intelligence and the machine learning okay a lot of uh, fields are there to cover on these topics so we'll discuss in these topics in the next ppt okay so let's move move to object oriented now objects help breaking down complex real life platforms for you now it is such that it can be coded and it can be solved to certain solutions to obtain certain solutions now what is oop this is kind of an object oriented problems or for you have in your real life to sum up it now we can sum up all these things to come up that python has a very simple syntax is that is readable and has a great community to support on that's all right so now move to see why or where the python is used in the industry so here we see google coming up so google uses python for a better search results and provided based on the ranking of the websites right you search anything on the google you see the website ranking coming up there okay so the website which is being opened the number of times will come up the first one okay so this is your ranking on the python there that is how it works so whenever you search in the google search engine what happens a million of results come within some just mini seconds right it could be 0.45 mini seconds 0.6 mini seconds and so on right so google uses this python for this uh, methods or this uh, rules so next we have dropbox now here itself the server and the client applications are coded using the python okay meanwhile if you have any kind of questions should we need to uh, anaconda and python not today i'll make you know how to install those okay now and we'll see the netflix what how netflix does so in netflix what happens you just go and create an account over there right you create some account what happens it asks you for the three movies of your interest to choose some three movies of your interest now there is a panel over there in the netflix section and this is your username let's say here is the username so you will be given some of the movies list out there let it be uh, okay so you will be given some of the them so you will be asked to choose some three of them so let's say you choose this one this one and this one so now this three will be based on some of the genre or movie criteria now what it will do it will make a clustering of these three types okay it will make a clustering of these three types and will make a relation that this particular user knows or this particular user like this three type of movies so what are the three categories on which this movie based on let it be it would be based on something uh, war type it could be based on some emotional factors it could be based on some of the thriller or let it be it could be based on some horror okay so it will makes these genres what are the genre of that particular um, user so on basis of this it will make some clusters over there we in the machine learning it's called as clustering algorithm okay so machine learning there netflix uses this algorithm to make or retain their users on basis of their interests similarly the amazon does similarly the uh, you can say uh, flipkart does or any e-commerce company all right they do similarly the same method okay they just clusters the interest of the user and then they work on okay so might be you might uh, be known about the training on the instagram or facebook how you get to know that that is just because of the machine learning right or you can say is marketing so in facebook or instagram marketing what you see is we market the company markets the topic based on the interest 
so company when gives the uh, this when the company sponsor any post or when the company just share any post or to get it marketed or to the users so it selects their users and the uh, selection area too okay so they select like let's say uh, let's say i want uh, a workshop to be happened in the hyderabad right so i will be selecting the areas of hyderabad right i'll be selecting the areas of hyderabad and i'll be selecting students age and the topics whom should i show the post whom should facebook show the post so i'll be st uh, selecting students ranging from 15 years to 18 years let it be 23 years to some particular years on basis of some of the factors let it be the student might have the, for only those students who have interest in the programming section or who have interest in the python programming section or let it be in the ai field or let it be aml field will select some of the topics over there and if all these condition matched for one particular student that particular student will be shown only that post not anyone else out there okay this is how marketing done on the basis of machine learning so basically we select some of the criteria some of the features and we'll do all these things similarly netflix does also okay moving ahead so another come as your national security agency of your uh, usa right their cyber security analysis and other encryption and decryption work, uh, work is done using Python. Remember, let's if I have written A, B, and C, so that might be this uh, encrypted as 1, 2, and 3. Now, this might be encrypted as 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, might be this. And this again B will be decrypted by the Python there. So, this is how encryption works, and then we go to the decryption out. Okay, this is all about it. Next, we have BitTorrent. Now, if you download anything from a BitTorrent, what happens? A lot of files get downloaded. A lot of files get started to download. You click one file to get downloaded, and then we will see a panel of number of files to be starting and downloading over there. So, what are those things? Those are nothing but the Python files which get peer-to-peer -peer transfer over there. One peer complete, that's okay. So, all the peer combined together, the peers plus peer combined together to give you a torrent file understood that you gave as your torrent file over there so at last we see the nasa doing the scientific calculations using the computer of the python now we have libraries such as your scipy we have library called as the numpy we have a lot of libraries for the calculation we have the sklearn we have matplotlib we have cborn uh, a lot of there through work on right so these are some of the things these are basically these two are basically used for the scientists by the scientists and also by the nasas to use the scientific calculations okay so moving ahead now so what is the learning path for getting started in the python now these are something interesting as you can see so what are the learning paths for start getting started in the python sector right so what we'll do is for getting started is just we have to follow some of the steps that the, we will start with the basics of the python and we will continue with these things okay not today but we will continue with all these things in the forward coming up days okay so now first my first thing would be the variables i will learn about the variables from tomorrow we will start all these things then we will go to the data types and the operators then we will move to the arrays and the flow control methods of python then we will see the file handling options the object oriented programming and then we'll for those who have enrolled for your microsoft examinations will practice uh, the sort of examination practice over there okay and for those who are not dead they will also practice don't worry okay so we'll practice a, a sort of uh, interview questions and the examinations coming up there for the python fields and how you can nurture yourself in the field of the python okay moving ahead so what are the career opportunities in the python sector if you see in the career opportunities, what are there in the career opportunities? So, inclination toward being curious and the hands on as a desired as for Python demands that we get our hands to hands dirty like a fiddle around the systems of errors and other issues. So, in an independent third party survey, it has been found that the Python programming language is currently the most uh, popular language for the data scientists, right? So the claim was sustained by IEEE, you know, I might be knowing for that. So which tracks, so IEEE tracks the programming language by the popularity, okay. And according to the, them, 
Python tops the list of the most programming language in 2018. It was slight down in 2019, but again increased in 2020. We'll see the graph. So on the basis, you can see the Python has been in increasing over and over, and you can see the graph going there, and it's like okay. And in place of Java, that was consistent from one time, and has gone now been decreasing as compared to the Python there, as per the interest. Right. So we have web development, we have game development, we have big data to work on, smart services, artificial intelligence and data science, we have web testing to work on. Right? And the salary we get there, we get a software developer around 71,000 71, or $557 per annum. We have senior software developer with some of the salaries and these are the posts. We'll discuss all those things. Now, for our Python developer job trend, in the previous year, 2019, Python shared around 28.73% of the share market and it was uh, around in the second or third position of the uh, languages, around all the 84 to 54 languages we have there, right? The Python was there, in there. okay? And now for the 2020, we are having Python in the top of that. So if people have confusions why we learn Python, will Python will help them or not? Please have the confusions for the students. Everyone, every time students have this confusion. So we have 41 large organizations of language have all around the world and we can see the Python at the top of them now. So that is a very good uh, example for you guys that Python is the best you can work with for till now. Okay, so it's, it's the best one to work on. Yeah, moving ahead now. So we move to the job trends in the Python. Now increase in the popularity is directly proportional to the rise in the job or market. Right? So Python developers are in a great demand for all over the world you can see as yes, your the graph. So in August 2019 indeed uh, this shows that 69 openings, 69 sorry it's 69k. So 69k openings for a Python developer. In 2019, New York City has declared for that. So New York City has the most number of job postings for a Python developer every year, followed by the Chicago and Francisco, right? So for an average Python developer salary, it would be focused on some of the factors, like one factor is your experience. Okay, now it depends on the experience, that the pay scale varies on the basis of experience. Now in India, an entry-level developer may earn a minimum of 2.4 lakhs per annum a minimum just an entry level developer okay so the upper limit however as i said it can be varied on on the basis of their uh, poses on the basis of the area poses by the developer now it can be depend on the some of the area also right so the on average an entry level programmer python developer earns around 500 and 500k in India, all right, and it's around 88,000k dollars, okay, in the US there, okay. This is a pay scale carried in till by 2019, okay. So in India, it's around, or you can say, as for your 5 lakh per year, and in the average salary here is your this one, okay. Moving ahead. So this is an average one guys again i'm saying it can be changed accordingly it can be changed there coming okay, so if we see the graph if we see the graph of the as i said the higher your experience is the higher you will be paid on okay. so at the senior python developer level these developers are likely to earn about 800k plus on the average after an experience of about one to four years so the biggest leap in the salaries is seen after the senior level of the software developers. Okay, so you, to give a very clear data, I'm just saying that if you have a one to four years of experiences, you will be getting a paid of just 588,000 K. If you have five to nine years of experience, there is a job scale for you for 1 million. Okay, this is how it works. Now, as I said, this was an experience. This was a factor based on the experiences. So now we'll see the factor based on the location. So based on the location, when it comes to India, the best location for a software developer with Python suits to be Gurgaon, right? Uh, Haryana having an average pay scale of 
31k plus or 734 you can say as for the per year right so now we can see all the five followed by the bangalore new delhi pune mumbai and so on now come to the usa section if we come to the usa salaries of python developer there varies geographically right everywhere it varies geographically so in the us the best location for the python developer seems to be the california or having there an average salary of 122k and as compared we have with 734k over there okay so they post around 1900 job postings every month for a python developer that is a huge trending job you can see as for now and there is no such age limit that this particular age or this particular age member or student should register or should come in the field of a python developer it's not any age out there to work on in these fields okay now this is based on the third factor call as your skill set now having knowledge with having knowledge of python but with some skill sets or with some some proof of a very uh, good topics let it be all let it be django api if you have machine learning cloud computing knowledge and it's good to have a very good position to in the big companies like your microsoft ibm facebook google or there okay so if you have a lot of good knowledge out there you can work on that okay so according to the pay scale uh, the python developer salary having a good knowledge around the django is the average salary it becomes 600k so it depends on the various factors as i said if you know django if you know aws if you know api docker linux cloud computing you might be getting an average salary uh, even if you are uh, just a one to four years of experience you have you might be getting a salary of around 1 million that's possible depends on your uh, skill set okay so this is how it depends on now how to start exactly when you come there so these were all the steps we are talking about so how to start all these things now so for starting all these we'll go with the first step of installation okay so how to install python this is a very easy step we'll come to the here let's say uh, new in got going to tab and there i will type for a python that's it so there you can come with the python.org they'll click on this link over there and you will be getting some of the download section so you can download here or your windows when you click click on the windows section and you will be prominent down coming down there and there you can see i have shared your drive link so you can download it from there don't worry to or don't you don't have any need to come here to download you just download from there for those who are coming here that's uh, no problem just click on the version you are you need to install so suppose you are need to install 3.8.4 just click on that so you will come and install this one that is your 64 executable installer so for a 32 one i have uh, imported there or oh, sorry it's uh, i have just ex uh, uploaded there in the drive there so you can go for that right so this is for python for anaconda also for everything i have done so when you download the pycharm when you download it uh, let me go to back to my ppt so once you are done with this you will install the python and when you are done with it, you will be choosing an id so what is now choosing an id right so ide choosing is very important because ide typically provides you the code editor based on your compiler or interpreter facilities or the debugger of your gui that is your graphical user interface so it's uh, particularly provide you the entire process of inoculations of your code creation or compilation of your testings of your data or the increases the productivity of your developers right so a developer working with an ide starts with a model and it goes to translate it with this suitable code so you should see whether a lot of factors affecting your ide right so it depends on you in which factor you want your ide let's say when you choose your ide you might keep something in your mind right you might have to keep something in your mind so what are those things so there are some of the factors you should follow let's say for the first factor when you want to choose your ide you should always see the level of expertise loe so you should always see the level of expertise whether you are a beginner or you are a professional all right 
then the next step you should see is your the type of industry you are using the type of industry you are in or the type of industry you are working in okay then the third thing you should follow up that the ability your ability to buy anything if you want to buy the commercial ides if you can pay and buy the commercial ides that's good there meanwhile if you don't you can follow up for the floss or the community versions cm community version okay. now the fourth thing is kind of what type of software you want to build with your python so that also depends on the basis of your software needs what type of software you want to work with in your python so that depends on that then the topic comes as uh, whether you need to integrate with your other languages or not if you want to convert your code to any particular other language whether it should be with c plus c to c plus plus let it be from c plus plus to java over there let it be from there java or you to be javascript from there to the python depends on your consistency or depend on your type of uh, working you are doing okay so these are the thing while you choose so you can choose anaconda so basically as i said ied ide is a standard uh, for your integrated integrated development environment so it stands for all these three terms right integrated development environment so it provides you a graphical user interface to work on eh? and it gives you an entire process to in which you can write your code for the increasing the productivity of the developers so this is what we use it for so you can install the pycharm over there and you can work for that let me discard it okay so if we come back to my area i think it's meeting over there which per version of python are we supposed to download so i have given in the drive with 3.6.5 so if you want to download any other version excluding the 3.6.5 but choose it choose above the 3.6.5 that's a basic one 3.6.5 i have given 3.8.3 i think let me see it if i see it it's which version in there yeah i have given the 64 bit for that and for a 3.8.3 version for the 32 bit so you can download any of the it's not to worry on for that if, meanwhile if you can download for the 64 bit and 32 for the anaconda okay so that was i was i think i even clear to you for the what is exactly is python how it learns and how it deals with all the things and then going to the python one so yeah again starting with all the first of all let me check whether you have any doubts over there so we were on the editors and i downloaded 3.7.5 3.7.8 so that's cool okay fine what is the difference does it make different versions have different compatibility of working Okay, so you can download the latest one also, but don't download any version below 3.6.5. So it makes only the difference of the less features and compatibility options. Okay, so you can download the latest one too. That's not to worry on. I have downloaded the latest one since uh, I see many a time system fell in the uh, workings of the 3.6. or 3.7 or the higher module. Sometimes system does not support. So I prefer to. Uh, load 3.615 so that is very compatible with every of the systems so you can uh, just download the letter latest one also can i ask a question yes sure and uh, sorry shivang i think your name is hey, we can ask it so you can speak and ask there is no problem for that
okay meanwhile when he asks when i type from courses import star it says no pro module what is saying when i type from courses import star in ideally no module name as courses yeah it will not take it accordingly there okay it will not take because it does not come with all of the modules pre installed they have to somewhat download it also if it is not coming there then you just go and import your pip install the courses there or okay so it depends all right coming ahead so i have downloaded from cmd already but it's still not working okay so what is the type of error you are getting so you can also work as a command from blessings import the terminal and so on you can work there so why you are needing cursors what you are do with the cursors what you will do there okay we'll discuss that in the class okay right so what's up me all their problems giving us screenshots so i'll see there okay don't worry right so there we come up with the choosing of the id we have choose what type so we have anaconda once you download the anaconda install that you will be getting probably like this jupyter lab notebook icham console spider globe is all all these things so we will be dealing with the notebook section so you will be asked to just to launch this once you launch this one it will open like uh, one second yeah so it will open in your default browser Okay, it will be open in your default browser there. So this is my default browser, Google. So I got open here. So there, what you do is need to click on the new and then for the Python three. So this is the file you will be getting there to work on. Now this particular step is for your input section where you will be giving some inputs and you will be getting some output. Well, you will be expecting something from the system to give you the output there, right? Now let's zoom in there. so this is a probably a jupyter section of all these things now it depends on you what type of you want the file okay you can change the kernel style you can just okay, i'm having a python 3 now that okay so you can change the cell type from the code and all these things right you can insert anything you can just view the line numbers and all these things there are a lot of things you can meanwhile if you want to insert an image you can use this with some of the links over there okay and this is what we can do with all these things if you want to maintain a uh, if you want to see, save anything you can just save as make copy and report to checkpoints if you want to download any file with pdf or ipnb ipnb is something your i you can say as a internet python or uh, just a notebook section okay so for kernel internet uh, your python notebook section this is your ip okay so you have to start up that see any questions over So we'll not see the coding sections today. We'll see only the basic introduction. So if I zoom it here, uh, now let me see. Uh, yep. So let's say we have written two plus three over there. We'll not be doing coding in the Python ideally. I don't like that. Okay. So I will doing in there, in this one and the PyCharm. Probably mostly times in the notebook section. So we have two plus three. Now if we want to run two plus three, what we'll do? Just we'll click on the run option. So here you can see. 2 plus 3 is an input for my program, and I have got an output that is my 5. Understood? That is my 5 over there. Now, what are these all things? How to operate with all these things? Now, if you want to copy this 2.3, if you want to make a copy of this cell, we'll click on this copy, and you will click on this paste. So a copy will come over there. Okay. Now, if you want to cut it, you will be cutting it there. If you want a new, this cell to be cut down, you will click there. If you want a new cell, you will click click on this. Okay. If you want this to be came down and this to be move up, so you will click in up there and this will be come down again. Okay. This is how you. If you want to run your program, you can use run. Either you can use Shift plus Enter. Okay. Meanwhile, you can use Shift plus Enter to work on. That is how you will work. So I'll not be using this particular run, run, run all the time. I'll be using this Shift Plus and over there, right? So you can stop any particular program if it, if if it is running, it will be come as a star over here. 
So if you want that it should be stopped, you can click on the stop over there and then you can read on and all these things. There are some of the options for the code, markdown, NB convert and the headings. These are something which we'll be using now. Okay, I'll be teaching you how to give for all these things, how to use all these things now. Okay. Yes. So see, ever when we give it as a kind of a markdown, so if we write, we need to write the codes inside the code section. By default, it is selected as a code. Now, if you want to give some headings over to your files, or if you give to the name the sub sub subtitles to your file, or any kind of things to right, you can just name over here your file name. Let it be uh, any file name. You can write it for the basic, basic, right? So that probably be a basic one. Okay, moving ahead. So renaming a file will do later. Like, what is this one? These are the line numbers. Okay, now I want the markdown. So in the markdown, what I'll write is, I, I just I'm writing it as kind of a heading. I've written heading and I've just used shift plus enter. You can see what happens. No output has been generated because this is a markdown. Or you can say this is a kind of a heading over there, right? So this is particularly for a sub, you can say as kind of a heading you want. Yes. Shivang, you are asking something. Can you click on the link I sent? This link? Okay, fine. All right. You are having a 32 bit. Okay. Hmm. Module not found. All right, now I'll, I'll tell you this in your WhatsApp. I'll let you know what's the problem coming. Okay, let's complete the class, then we'll see what. Where was I? Uh, in the, okay, he was here only. Section. So this is heading particularly, right? So if you want this to be bold, or if you want this to be a big heading, what you will do is, we will be writing an hashtag over there and will giving a space. So this single hashtag stands for an heading one. This double hashtag stands for a heading two. This triple hashtag for heading three. Similarly, you have heading four as for H4. Sorry, you have H5. And you meanwhile have the H6, sorry, this is H, this is H5, and then you have H6. This is your last one, right? So what this stands for actually, this stands for if you want to give your heading to the file, you can write it for something like, depends on you which the kind of heading you want to give to your notebook or anything, right? So. I have given, if you want to write the title of this notebook, I'll be using heading one. Depends on what kind of uh, title you want, what kind of heading you want. It totally depends on you, uh, what you're using over there, right? So these are the kind of headings. So what there, what I did is I will have used hashtags. So have I, as the number of uh, hashtags I'm increasing, what is happening there? The size of the heading is decreasing over there, right? Running there now. So what if we write these hashtags here in the code instead of this in the markdown? What if I write these things in the code section? So let's take a box. Yes. And let's say if I have written it like three plus seven. And meanwhile, if would I have written it as a hashtag? Okay, not this. Coming uh, up there. As an hashtag. So what you see is the whole code just went italic and became in the green color. Now that is particularly called as a comment. Okay. So if we see to this, so this is called as your comment now. So what are comments actually? So 
programmers coherent statements that describe what a block of code make a sense of that right what a block of code is you trying to make a sense whatever you have written is exactly what if you want to describe your code we will write a comment over there suppose 2 plus 3 i am writing here that this will add 2 to 3 that's all so this particularly says that i want to describe something about my code right i want to describe something about my code so contents or comments are very useful when they are writing for a uh, websites or a couple of large codes over there or you can say it's practically inhuman to remember because it's very inhuman to remember all these 150 or 2 200 let it be any number of n pages of codes you have written on it's very difficult to understand and remember every particular code you have written during the uh, compilations or just writing on the codes right so when you have a 100 page program what you do you write all the codes there so therefore therefore making it easy to understand things you use the codes or you use the comments over there i want to write if i want to write a multiple comment that's easy right so comment is of two type it can be a single line comment it can be a multi line comment so single line comment would be like this is a single line comment understood this is a single line comment now what is a multi line comment so this is a multi line comment so you guys have noticed what is the major importance here you are not getting any of the output after the running of the particular cell why because this comment will not give you any output if you write anything or if you write any particular line or code and you use an hashtag just before the code so that will become a comment there yeah. and the comment will not be printed as an output not be readed as a machine learning code as not be readed as a machine code for the uh, machine right so these python will not read these lines this will read these lines but not these lines this will just skip on that ignore that line you can say okay so this is how you can if you want to write multiple lines so multiple comment or multi line comments look like something like that okay so this is how you work with the comment section so comment will not give you any output so if i write that print if i want to print anything in the python what i do is print 2 plus 3 something like that so if i run this i'll be getting an output that is in my 5 2 plus 3 is equals to 5 so now we'll ask why this printing will get, have given 5 and why this uh, without printing has given output 15 because the python is enough uh, sufficient to tell you whether what you are using so if you are using 2 plus 3 you don't know what you are using there we are just writing 2 plus 3 so it is giving you just that it's an output of 2 plus 3 5 now if you are writing print 2 plus 3 you initially want that i want a print of 2 plus 3 that's all so that will give only you 5 okay I'll try to understand now here you are intentionally printing something here you are unintentionally just writing 2 plus 3 so python how python will know that whether you are writing unintentionally or not if you are writing intentionally you use print over there that will give you an output and if you don't write over that again it will give you an output there is no such any difference on that okay so why this is not changing to heading c so this is why not changing to heading because as i said these cells are used in the code section if we write anything there in the heading if we change it in the heading or markdown heading and markdown are same so if we change it in the markdown this will be changed okay we'll just have to remove a space over there and this will be changed so you can see it has been changed to a heading now so codes will be codes by default every particular cell you are getting are codes and if you write anything inside the heading or markdown it will be marked as your heading for you guys okay understood moving ahead uh yes so print 2 plus 3 will give you the 
5 over there and so on it works right yeah so now we'll see some keywords so what are keywords there guys so keywords are nothing some of the special names that are already present in the python and we can use these keywords for very specific functionalities while writing a python program so how to use that let's say let's say that you have written some words so keep remember that you should not uh, use these keywords as your variables we'll discuss what are variables for the you should not discuss you should not use this variables as your keywords so what could be the keywords suppose i have written import i have written let's say i have written true i have written false so you can see these as a bold green colors uh, let's say i have written some let's say i have written end float these to be a green color but not the bold one okay what is the difference between all these three and these three i have taken only six one okay now the difference between these is that these three are the functions right and these three are the keywords so keywords will be a kind of a typical bold green colors how do we make a code run infinitely by using the while loop you can use a while loop there and it will run for the while uh, for infinite times okay you can use the for loop too like while one no you can write like while a situation is true that's all write a correct situation and it will be keep on iterating for a number of times okay yes so print two plus three like that okay so what where was i the basic difference between a keyword and functions so yes the bold green colors will give you the keywords so how could you get to know that how many keywords you are having in the python so there we use for seeing a list of keywords we write import keyword right we import a module called as keyword now from there we'll write it as keyword dot kw list keyword dot kw's list so this will probably this will print all the keywords in the python all right this will print every each of the keyword we will have in the python so we'll get to know that whether it is a keyword or not or we'll see how many keywords are there in the python for you guys okay so yes so if you run this you will see a list of keywords there now as you can see the output has been generated and you can see false none true whatever i've used right so these are the keywords there import and all the import and all these things are the keyword that's why it has been in a deep green colors right understood so yeah so if you want to check whether anything is a keyword or not a keyword so what you will do there you will be checking it like let's say keyword is a keyword or not so there you need to write keyword dot is keyword and the thing what i have used here as the brackets is called as your parenthesis okay this is kind of a parenthesis you see so here under the quotes i'll be writing it as let's say i'm writing for try let's say let's check whether try is a uh, keyword or not so i'll write keyword in the keyword module check whether it is a keyword or not the try is a keyword or not just read it from the right hand side in the keyword module check whether try is a keyword or not so it will return you some boolean value let it be for true or false whatever comes there so it will return you true because i can see try here is a keyword so if you don't if you take a name let's say if it is not a keyword let's say we have taken a term let's say for it's deep learning so we'll run this and we see that deep learning is not a keyword over there okay this is probably how we deal with all these things so these are keywords more from apart from the keywords we'll discuss from tomorrow okay
yes so getting ahead to the next one so these are something of the environment where we will writing on okay and this is the something where you can save or your file and meanwhile also you can in the from the home page of the jupyter you can click on any particular file let's say this one is running for now there you get files running and clusters clusters basically will give you the python parallel files running will say you that whether a file is running or not if it is running you can shut down from here if you want or meanwhile you can close that from here okay that depends on you uh moreover you get some of the types if you select any of them and you want to download it you have an option duplicate rename move download view edit every options there if you want to upload any files inside your jupyter you can use this upload option and then you can upload any of the things okay any other things you can just upload in there and then you can work on moving ahead yeah so let's move let's see if anyone is having any doubts or no so we'll have class till 9:30 that's 20 minutes left over there so it will go there to the python there yep is it starting yeah so there we come why the reason summing up now the python for you guys so the reason one is that python have an extensive libraries and a frameworks to work on for the machine learning and artificial intelligence stuffs it could be keras tensor flow scikit learn numpy pandas scipy what are these things let's say uh what is these frameworks or libraries to understand a bit of that let's say you have physics and meanwhile you have science so what is physics and what is science if you define it as physics is a part of a science right physics is a part is a domain of a science you get there similarly you get frameworks as a part of your libraries libraries as a frame a part of your frameworks they are used for the machine learning they use for the artificial intelligence and some of the things you can get as the keras means the flow scikit learn numpy these are the modules used in the uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence for uh, developing some models or many of the things for doing some computational skills over there right moving on the second reason we saw that python is an independent platform language where you can just write your code individually without the help of someone and in any of the systems like for the windows mac os linux and everything which means python code can be easily distributed and scaled over there okay moving ahead so the reason 3 we saw that python is always among the top 10 probably in the top 5 always mostly in the top 3 also so now in the top 1 right so there it is and you can work with any of the skills of the library you need to Uh, you can excel on any particular library of a python to work on that also depends that you could be a python developer if you can work on any particular library for a python okay moving ahead so the fourth reason we see that python is very easy to learn and the language reassembles everyday english and it simplex and the syntax allows you to comfortably work with the complex systems ensuring clear relations between the systems and an environments that is important point moving ahead so we saw that we can develop the websites we can develop software uh, desktop software we can develop games and graphics we can do a bit complications of the with the android applications now coming up to the android applications we all know about the instagram right we all know about the instagram there So Instagram in Instagram you choose an username let's say my it's something like that or let it be anything so you choose an username what happens there it asks you to choose some underscores dot and then to choose with some of the names and then to choose or underscores and dot and so on you choose something like that okay so why you do all these things when tomorrow we'll start we'll see that when we name anything in python we need to start it with an underscore sorry we need to do an underscore in that we can start without underscore but we can't give gaps suppose i am writing my name let's say i am writing my name so i cannot give a gap there in the variable i will have to use some dots over there that is much important so this is why instagram ask you for the user because instagram is totally based on the python it has been programmed in python so it just not allow you to use the uh, gaps over there okay 
now you can perform some data analysis using some visual tools for the machine learning you can create your artificial neural networks and you can work with the big data section uh, for with the use of spark or that okay the features with python give no compilations and linking since it's an interpreter machine or interpreter language so no compilation is there that is cut off there and no type declarations automatic memory management as i said high level computation data types and operations you have oop there it uh, it can be embedded and extended in the c language and a lot of things are there i'll give you this ppt you can just go through that okay yes so what is an ide as i said this probably will be getting once you install once you install this you will be getting this as your ide and then you can write and just make your codes let's say you have written here as your it will probably come in like uh, this one there and there you write your codes let's say you have written 2 plus 3 you will get an output over there you can see they are coming like a three arrows there and it's you can just print it over it will just work on okay so these are the things which we deal with the python right uh, yes so now we end up with our session for today yes now you can ask any problems or any questions related during the session if anything you would have not understood for that you can ask now so what do you mean when you say a program is learning a program is when i say a program is learning program is when i say a program is learning is kind a model is learning or when i say program is learning is kind i mean to teach some algorithms to the program i mean to make my program train over that okay that is particularly done in the machine learning section okay yes running okay running you are asking fine running so here that one is your say you are saying about this running section so it says that this particular notebook is open this one so if you don't want you can just click on here and you can shut down so once it shut down there are no notebook running on understood it's an adapting it's, it is adapting a feature it's uh, all right that's not exactly features all right yes so any questions from anyone were you having any problem for the understanding the python what is it how it works on what is its capabilities and all these things okay let me stop your video you will be getting your video with 